नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल माई सेल्फ जे वी एम डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन इन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट चौथी विद्यापीठ वुमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट लिम्फोमा एंड स्पेशली इन लिम्फोमा वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट हॉपकिंस लिम्फोमा Now let's start with the malignancies of the lymphoid cells. The malignancies of the lymphoid cells ranges from the most indolent to the most aggressive human malignancies. These cancers arises from cells of the immune system at different stages of differentiation. resulting in a wide range of morphological immunological and clinical findings some malignancies of lymphoid cells almost always present as leukemia that is primary involvement of the bone marrow and blood others almost always present as lymphomas that is solid tumors of the immune system classification of lymphoid malignancies classification of the lymphoid malignancies was devised through morphological clinical immunological and genetic information with the constitutional symptoms of fever sweat anorexia and weight loss The lymphoma arises from lymphoid tissues and are characterized by lymph node enlargement, splenomegaly, and constitutional symptoms with fatal outcome. These are diagnosed from pathological findings on biopsy and are classified as Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. the majority are of b cell origin non hodgkin lymphomas were separated from hodgkin's lymphomas by recognition of the reed sternberg cells so this is important reed sternberg cells this is the picture of hodgkin's lymphoma in today's lecture we are going to discuss about hodgkin's lymphoma and in the next lecture we are going to discuss about non hodgkin's lymphoma Hodgkin's lymphoma is a chronic lymphoproliferative disorder of the unknown etiology. It is of B cell origin with more common in whites than in blacks. It is more common in males than in females with a ratio of 1.5 to 1. It often presents with enlargement of peripheral lymph nodes. There is a bimodal distribution of the age at diagnosis has been observed with one peak incidence occurring in their 20s that is 25 to 30 years and the other in those in their 80s that is 50 to 70 years with a median of 31 years in the younger age group it is diagnosed to have the nodular sclerosing subtype of hodgkin's lymphomas for the elderly patients The patient infected with HIV. Association between infection by Epstein-Barr virus and Hodgkin's lymphoma. The hallmark of Hodgkin's lymphoma is the presence of Reed Sternberg cells. Now there are four stages of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Stage one, there is localized disease with a single lymph node region or single organ. In the stage two, there are two or more lymph nodes. regions on the same side of diaphragm in the stage 3 there are two or more lymph node regions above and below the diaphragm and in stage 4 there is widespread disease with the multiple organs with or without lymph node and involvement next we have n arbor staging system for hodgkin's lymphoma there are various stages stage 1 with the involvement of single lymph node region 
or the lymphoid structure, for example, spleen, thymus, or the void air veins. In stage two, there is involvement of two or more lymph node regions on the same side of diaphragm. In the stage three, there is involvement of lymph node regions or the lymphoid structures on both the sides of the diaphragm. 3.1 subdiaphragmatic involvement that is limited to the spleen, splenic hilar nodes, celiac nodes, or the portal nodes. In 3.2, there is subdiaphragmatic involvement that includes paraaortic, iliac, or mesenteric nodes plus the structures in 3.1. In the stage four, there is involvement of the extranodal sites beyond that designated as E, that is any involvement of the liver or bone marrow. The symptoms A, that is no symptoms, and B, that is an unexplained weight loss of greater than 10% of the body weight during the past six months before staging investigations. There is unexplained persistent or recurrent fever with temperatures greater than 38 degrees Celsius during the previous month. There are recurrent drenching night sweats during the previous months. E is the involvement of single extranodal site that is contagious or proximal to the known nodal site. And X is the bulky disease greater than one third widening of mediastinum, greater than 10 centimeter maximum dimensions of the nodal mass. Now we come to the clinical features of Hodgkin's lymphoma. The clinical features are divided into three broader categories that are local signs, systemic symptoms, and metastatic growth or infiltration. The immunological changes like lowering resistance to infection or hemolytic anemias. Now we start with Local signs. In the local signs, we have lymphadenopathy that is non tender, painless, rubbery, and usually the neck or supraclavicular fossa. The other axilla, groin, mediastinum, or abdomen. The lymph nodes may fluctuate in size. There is characteristic appearance in advanced stages is pyramidal swelling with the base at the clavicle and apex at the base of the jaw. There is splenomegaly in two-thirds of the cases, usually moderate. There is hepatomegaly in 50% of the cases with moderate and non-tender. The pain in lymph nodes or alcohol consumption. The systemic symptoms of Hodgkin's lymphoma includes fever, night sweat, weight loss, infections, and anemia, that is immune hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia. The fever of unknown origin and the fever persists for days or two weeks. It is followed by afebrile intervals and then recurrence of the fever. This pattern is known as pen Epstein fever. There is mild grade remittent like tuberculosis with continued type resembling typhoid. Due to metastatic growth or infiltration, there are various symptoms like skin symptoms, there is severe and unexplained itching, with cutaneous disorders such as erythema nodosum. In CNS, there is paraneoplastic cerebellar degeneration, there is thesias and pain, with diplegia or paraplegia. In bones, there is localized bone tenderness, media standing pressure, dyspnea, cyanosis, strider, and dyspagia. In the GIT, there is intestinal obstruction with jaundice and ascites. In the genitourinary system, there is hematuria, pyuria, and retention of urine. Due to immunological changes, there is lowering resistance to infection and hemolytic anemias. Now, what are the various investigations to be done in case of Hodgkin's lymphoma? The lab investigations include full blood count that may be normal, the normochromic normocytic anemia or lymphopenia, which is a poor prognostic feature. 
an eosinophilia or neutrophilia may be present. The PSR may be raised and LDH raised levels are also an adverse prognostic feature. The liver function may be abnormal in the absence of disease or may reflect hepatic infiltration. The renal function test to ensure normal functioning prior to treatment. There is lymph node biopsy that shows presence of fluid Sternberg cells. Absence will not rule out. Three lymphocytes, eosinophils, and stroma, which destroys the cells. Imaging the chest x ray may show mediastinal muscles. The CT scan of chest, abdomen, and pelvis permits staging. Bulky disease with greater than 10 cm in a single node mass is an adverse prognostic feature. In the bone marrow, if these symptoms of anemia, thrombocytopenia, and leukemia are present, other imaging like gallium scanning, PET scan are sometimes useful. Now the management. The patient with localized Hodgkin's lymphoma are cured in greater than 90% of the times. A brief course of chemotherapy is followed by radiotherapy to the sites of node involvement in patients with localized or good prognosis disease. Here, the extended field radiotherapy is a high cure rate. Chemotherapy regimen is a combination of doxorubicin, bleomycin, limblastin, and bicarbazine, that is ABVD. There is mock regime, that is meclorethanol, vincristin, procarbazine, prednisolone regimens, that is replaced by ABVD due to the risk of developing acute leukemia. Autologous bone marrow transplantation can cure half of the patient in whom effective chemotherapy regimen failed to induce durable conditions. Now the prognosis. Over 90% of the patients with early stage Hodgkin's lymphoma achieve complete remissions when treated with chemotherapy that is followed by involved field radiotherapy and the great majority are cured. Long-term disease-free survival in patients with advanced disease can be achieved in greater than 75% of the patients who lack systemic symptoms and in 60-70% to 70 of the patients with systemic symptoms. The most serious late side effects includes second malignancies and cardiac surgery. The side effect of treatment includes Lermit syndrome that occurs in about 15% of the patient who receive thoracic radiotherapy. This syndrome is manifested by an electric shock sensation into the lower extremities on flexing the neck. There is infertility that is concern for all the patients undergoing treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. There is development of hypo hypothyroidism after radiotherapy. Now we come to classical Hodgkin's lymphoma. It is divided into four subtypes based on pathology. We have nodular sclerosing Hodgkin's lymphoma, mixed cellularity Hodgkin's lymphoma, lymphocyte rich and lymphocyte depletion. So this was all about Hodgkin's lymphoma. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This session is powered by digital version 2.0 of Jyoti Vidya Peter Women's University. I hope you are satisfied with my digital session. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I will try to resolve it. So this was all for today. Thank you very much. We will be meeting in the next lecture, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for more.